In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Sony Macopi Pro 12 sensor kit to see if it's worthy of the upgrade. Hi, my name is Eric. I'm a 3D artist using programs like Blender, Unreal Engine, and iClone to bring my stories to life, and I make videos and 3D assets to help you do the same. Almost three months ago, I released my review on the original Macopi 6 sensor kit, and if you want to check that out, I will link to it here. In that video, I go over why I chose the Macopi over other options, where it shines, where it struggles, and why I was able to get results that I was happy with when I did cleanup with Reillusion's iClone 8. And while the Macopi isn't perfect, I really like the original 6 sensor version. My question, as I considered the upgrade, was to double the sensors and double the price give you double the performance. And that's what we're gonna look into in this video. Now the folks over at Sony were gracious enough to send me an additional six sensors, two receivers, and additional bands, as well as a copy of Zen Studio for free to do this testing. But as a user who liked the original version, my goal is to give you honest feedback so you can make a wise purchasing decision if you're considering the Macopi Pro for yourself. Going into my testing and based on my past experience, I had several areas I wanted to review. But first, we need to do the setup. Overall, I do feel like the setup was a little bit longer. Obviously, we have more sensors to connect, but once you get used to the process, I'm sure it will go faster. During the setup, it became very clear that the Pro system was very much built as an upgrade rather than as a standalone product. But I really like that approach. Yes, you need to apply stickers to a second batch of sensors to differentiate them, but the directions are clear and the extra stickers are provided in case the ones you have ever wear off. Personally, I might have liked to have either a silicone sleeve or a new faceplate in different colors to apply to the second set of sensors, making them more visually distinct. But in the end, I doubt it would be worth the price manufacturing those. But again, I like the ingenuity on the developer side to basically take what they already had and upgrade it to keep the cost down. Now, the only negative experience I had when doing the initial setup process was when I got to the pairing stage. One of my sensors wouldn't connect. When I tried to go back a page and try again, that seemed to glitch out Zen Studio. But since I know how to turn off the sensors already, I was able to basically restart the software and the sensors and begin again without any trouble. While that works for an existing user, it might be a little scary for someone who's just starting off for the first time. So my suggestion would be to try to work out that bug or give a pop-up tip to users if for some reason a sensor isn't connecting. Now, there was really only one other problem I ran into when I was doing my testing, which was calibration and interference, but I believe it was caused by my own environment. You see, my PC is a hulking 60 to 70 pound tower, so my initial testing was done in my office at that computer. The room itself is pretty small, maybe 10 foot by 10 foot at most, but then I have storage and a workbench and my desk, and a lot of it is made of metal. Now, the warning I got says check for signal interference, but it doesn't say what to check for. Based on my previous research into other systems, I gather that the inertial-based systems can run into issues with magnetic interference. But maybe it was where I was placing my receivers? Either way, as I got further away from my workbench, I was able to calibrate more consistently. But here as well, my suggestion to Sony would be to provide a guide for best practices and what to avoid during this setup phase. A quick video or a pop-up with items you should avoid, or what is the proper height for the receivers, or how far of a reach do they have, that way the end user can be best set up for success. As for me, with this interference and the confined workspace, I really wasn't happy with the results that I was getting. In the past with the 6 sensor version, I did most of my recording in my living room. I never had the phone tell me I was running into interference unless I was by my metal end table, so I figured I'd have more success out there. So I pulled out my old tower, hooked it up to my TV, and did the setup process all over again. Unfortunately, my living room sits right on top of my garage. While I was getting cleaner input and calibration out there, I was still getting some interference, which I suspect the culprit to be the garage door opener. But overall, I was having much more success in the living room, and I had a lot more space to work with. But this is something I think should be taken into account. I loved the original Macopi because it was paired to my phone. I could essentially take it anywhere. Now the system is still working off of Bluetooth, but you need two receivers to pair it to all 12 sensors. So you need a computer. And if you have a laptop, I think that's the ideal solution. And because it works off of Bluetooth, you can still take the system anywhere you want because you're not relying on a Wi-Fi signal. So if you're running into interference like I did, 
take the system outside. I think it's a huge plus for the Makopi. Okay, but let's get on to the actual testing. Now that I had more space and a more stable connection, I had several things I was looking into. Starting with the arms and the legs, motions seem to be much smoother and much more accurate. I think the added sensors on the thighs and the arms are a huge bonus. And I no longer look like I'm hunching my shoulders during the capture. You also have the option to place the secondary head and hip sensors either on your feet or in your hands. And since I will be animating the hands anyway, I opted to place the sensors on my feet. And I have to say, the results are incredible. I was very impressed by how well it tracked me as I moved around my physical space. And I was even more surprised that it could pick up my jumping motions very nicely as well. Additionally, I feel like the speed at which I can record the capture is much improved. With the 6 sensor version, I found I got more stable performances if I reduced the speed at which I was acting. But now, I feel like it can keep up with me without any issue. Honestly, I was kind of giving myself a workout as I tested the system, and it stayed with me throughout all of my performances. And this is another thing that showed up during the testing, that I was able to record for much longer periods of time before having to recalibrate. With the 6 sensor version, I found that even during the most minor recordings, I would have some amount of sensor drift over the duration of the recording. So as best practice, I needed to recalibrate for each performance to get the best result. In the end, it didn't take that much time, but the fact that I can now go from one long recording to the next, back to back, it's such a time saver and it allows you to stay in that performance mindset all along. Overall, just from what I could see on my TV, the performance fidelity was vastly improved, but I needed to see it in the computer to judge for myself. As I mentioned, Sony also provided me with a version of Zen Studio. Unfortunately, the version I received for testing seemed to be missing some of the updated features found on the website. Based on what I read on the website, Zen Studio could have some interesting functions coming. Again though, I use iClone 8, which helps me dive into the more robust animation and mocap refinement, all before I send it out to my render engine of choice, whether that be Blender or Unreal Engine 5. So Zen Studio at this point is basically acting like a glorified viewer for me, and since I'm taking the motions into a different program anyway, it's a little lost on me, and personally it wouldn't be worth the subscription price. But if the tweening works, or if there is a foot locking tool similar to what is available in Rococo Studio, and the motion library has a lot of useful assets, I could see it being useful for other users, especially if they don't have a mocap refinement program like iClone 8. And so I brought all the data that I captured into iClone for myself, because that gives me the best benchmark for my own workflow. And what did I think about the Makopi Pro's fidelity? Does that justify the bump up in price? Admittedly, when I was doing my recording test, I knew it looked better, but was it essentially twice as good as before? Here in iClone, where I usually do my adjustments, this is where the system truly revealed how good it is. The refinements I had to make were so much less than before. The foot placement and the tracking were so much better. I mean, there's a little bit of sliding, but it's so minimal that if my shots don't show the feet, I don't need to clean it up. Overhead motions could still use a little work. I did some fake bow and arrow tests like I had done in my previous versions, and while it was light years better from where it was, the arms did have some trouble getting into the exact positions I was in, mainly by the face. But that's an easy fix. Also, the crouching motions still struggled a little bit. It's almost like the sensors thought I should be sitting in a chair rather than what I was doing. But those are two extremes that I knew would be challenging. Again, overall it is much better, but those could be areas I would suggest further updates, possibly with firmware. Once I did the minimal cleanup in iClone 8, I sent the test animations to Unreal Engine 5 for rendering, and there is where I was truly amazed. I was so happy because the amount of performance that was pulled through into the character, and knowing the minimal amount of effort that I went through to clean it up, it was just amazing. So from the perspective of a person who owns the original 6 sensor Makopi and was wondering if it was worth the upgrade, after these tests, I can say yes. If you're like me, a previous owner of the Makopi, and you were happy with it, and you're serious about using mocap in your projects, then I think it has a lot to offer. With the additional sensors, I think it can save you a lot of time, which is absolutely worth the money. The only real big change for me was having to go from the phone to the computer, which if you have a laptop, I think you're golden. Again, I love the way the developers put together a system that can essentially be upgraded with additional sensors, receivers, and straps. But I can't help but think, I have a lot of stuff in a lot of different boxes now, and I would either want to make my own mini Pelican case based storage system for all the components, or it would be really cool if Sony did put a case together themselves. 
maybe in a way that the sensors could still be charged, but something that was color coordinated that would make storage and setup a little bit easier. I love the Makopi Pro 12 sensor system. I think Sony really has a unique place in the market because someone can dip their toes into mocap and see if it's for them. And if they're getting more serious about it, then they can upgrade for even more fidelity and a faster workflow. Who else can say that they offer that? If you want to learn more about the Sony Makopi or any of my go-to cleanup steps in iPhone 8, then I will link to videos here. Otherwise, if this video gave you value and helped you make a wise purchasing decision, please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it as well. My name is Eric from Libertas Video, and I'll see you in the next one.